Good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for another devotional, and um, hope you have your coffee and your Bibles with you this morning. We're going to be looking in the book of uh, Colossians, um, and uh, we'll stay there for a couple of, of devotionals. But first, uh, I wanted to mention that this uh, tonight, this is uh, we're going to be looking at uh, um, the administrative council is going to be looking at uh, the question as to reconvening on Sunday mornings. Um, it has been allowed. Many of you know that the governor has allowed uh, in service uh, worship services and, and personal worship worship services uh, to start on the 24th of this month. The bishop has concurred and um, we will be looking as administrative council how that can work, how we can navigate that um, and we'll see what uh, in the days to come if, if we can uh, if we can do all the things that uh, are necessary to keep people safe in, in that uh, in that time. So we will give you more information as it comes when we do open the worship services. Um, we will uh, prob we will do our best to make sure everybody knows by Facebook or the websites. Um, we'll uh, make phone calls through the one call uh, so that everybody will know when church is opening back up. We'll, pro we'll post it on the news and things like that. Um, we will also probably have um, some form of uh, reserving seats. Uh, there's a, a limited capacity, uh, at least in this phase, uh, for church services. Um, they are requiring us to limit uh, our space to like 25% capacity kind of thing. Um, one person every six feet. Um, so th those are the kind of details we'll be working out as administrative council and you will know the details um, uh, very soon as we come up with them. Um, but before we do uh, our devotional this morning, I'd like to pray for us and pray for this transition, especially because uh, your church leaders are looking for w wisdom from God as to how best to navigate. This is a, obviously a strange time for us and we want to make sure we can navigate them um, with integrity, uh, spiritually as well as uh, compassionately for the uh, needs of the people uh, who will be coming to church. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. I pray your grace given to us today that we um, might uh, find in this day your new mercies, uh, your new graces given to us and as we walk in these graces, that we will continue to be changed into the likeness of Jesus, your Son. I pray that you would touch us through this, uh, this reading of the scriptures. Give us your insights. Help us to understand more of what you want us to do and how you want us to act and live out our Christian lives. Um, we pray your blessings, obviously, on this transitioning back, phasing back into worship. Uh, help us to have wisdom uh, and understanding as we uh, lean on you for for your truth in these days, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're in the book of Colossians. Um, I, I wanted to, you know, kind of touch base with a couple of things that came out of Colossians. I've been looking at that for a, a last a couple of days. Um, <clears throat> if you've been watching the news, you, you see a lot of uh, problems. Uh, you, you're probably accustomed to the issues of the day, and there are a lot of issues uh, in, in our day. We have there are drug problems, there are crime problems, there are um, uh, chemical dependency, alcoholism. There, are all kinds of frustrating things in our lives that we wish we could just kind of do away with. Um, we one of the big problems of our day today is obviously this virus that has been really upending our um, our lives. If if uh, if you would have told us six months ago that this was going to happen today, we would have not believed it. It's just so, so unbelievable the effect and the impact that this virus has had on us. So all of these problems uh, in the news are, are re reflected, but Paul's uh, letter to the Colossians, I, um, I wanted to look at chapter 1 and highlight verse uh, 21 for us. Um, 21, uh, Colossians 1, 21, uh, Paul talks about a problem that is the root cause of all of the other problems that we're experiencing, and uh, that's why I kind of want to, wanted to go there. Uh, Paul says in Colossians 1.21, he says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. And I wanted to just kind of stay on that verse for a little bit and talk about uh, what, what alienation is and how uh, alienation serves 
to create all of these other problems. If, if we were not alienated from God, we would not have these problems. But because we're uh, alienated from God, uh, we have all these struggles. If, if we are alienated from a God of love, we will have, have less love in our lives. If we are alienated from a God of peace, we will have less peace in our lives. If we are alienated from a God of goodness, we will have less goodness in our lives. And so you see how alienation from God uh, tends to saturate our lives and our situations, and it causes a lot of difficulties. If we would have been able to stay in the Garden of Eden, we would never have experienced poverty or crime or, or, or this virus-type situation. Um, the, the life in the Garden with God, uh, connected to God, was a safe and wonderful place uh, to be. But uh, Paul connects this alienation from God in this verse, verse 21, he connects it with evil, evil behavior. And when you think about it, the connection between the two, alienation from God and evil behavior, um, they are both a, a cause and a result. Um, they are both a result and a reason. Alienation from God is both a result and a reason uh, for evil behavior, and evil behavior is both a result and a reason for alienation from, from God. When, when, we're in, when we live in verse 21, we are living in a, in a vicious cycle. Um, that we are, uh, we do something bad, and that alienates us from God. That's our evil behavior alienates us from God, which in turn, because we are alienated from God, we are more prone to do more evil behavior. Um, so we do something bad, and we're alienated from God, and that alienation from God causes us to do more bad things, which causes us to be more alienated from God, which causes uh, more bad stuff, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is this that we are in this uh, vicious cycle of, of going from one thing to the next, from alienation to sin to alienation to sin, on and on and on. And throughout history, as we read uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2, uh, all throughout history, humanity has tried to deal with this alienation from God, narrow this gap between us and God, and kind of fix this, mend this breach, uh, this, this break between us. And, and so uh, if you look at chapter 2, uh, you see that uh, Paul notes a lot of different uh, attempts to mend this uh, break between us and God. Uh, we've tried philosophy in verse 8. It says, uh, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow, hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on uh, human tradition and the elemental uh, spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. And so Paul says, um, in, our, in our attempt to get back connected with God, philosophy is not going to take us there. We've tried ceremonialism, verse 16 and 17. Paul says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or what you drink with regard to religion, religious festivals, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is, a, is found in Christ. So, so Paul says it's not philosophy and it's not these religious kind of ceremonies that are going to bring us back into connection with God. Um, we've tried mysticism in verse 18. Uh, says, do not let anyone who delights in the false and false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person uh, also goes into great detail about what they have seen, and they are puffed up with their idle notions, uh, with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its lig ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. And so Paul says that there's a mysticism, there's a, you know, there, there's a, uh, you know, I, I talk to angels kind of mysticism. He says that's not going to, that's not going to connect you. Claiming that kind of, of, of stuff is not going to connect you to God. Um, we've tried legalism, verses 20 to 23. Paul talks about human commands and teachings and regulations and how we, we sometimes we want to get closer to God, so we just set up all these rules and regulations and thou shalt not and all this kind of stuff. And we say, if I just can live this moral life, then I can connect myself to, to God. And, and all of these attempts, philosophy, ceremonialism, mysticism, legalism, all of these um, attempts to reconnect with God uh, fail, basically. No matter what we try, we can't break this cycle of, of committing sins that lead to alienation from God, which lead to more sins and more alienation, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, the basic uh, 
crux of, of Colossians chapters 1 and 2 as it talks about this dilemma that we are in is that we can't fix it by ourselves, And that's one of the first steps of the gospel to understand that in our attempt to connect with God or reconnect with God, uh, we have to first understand that we can't fix this by ourselves. This is not something that we can come up with uh, uh, this kind of witty plan or, or, or things. We're, we're really good as human beings at trying to um, outsmart our problems and we're kind of fix it type people. And, and I find my, that, that in my nature that I, that I have to fix everything. If I, if I come across a problem, I got to try to fix it. And if I'm not careful, that'll bleed into my relationship with God. And then I'm trying to fix my relationship with God. I'm trying to do all these wonderful religious and philosophical and mystical and legalistic kind of things to, to bring me into closer relationship with God. When the truth of the matter is, Paul urges us and warns us in Colossians to be careful of that stuff because that stuff, all of that stuff is just sidetracks away from the real answer uh, to this dilemma in which we find ourselves. And so I want you to pray about that and think about this dilemma and, and uh, just kind of pray about Colossians and maybe stay in there for a little bit. We'll be talking about that. And I'll revisit this with you and go further into this issue uh, tomorrow when we, when we meet again. Um, but for now, let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your love for us and thank you for your word to us. We ask as we continue to, to study in Colossians that you would give us graces and insights into our lives uh, not so that just we would have these wonderful academic insights, but so that these insights might produce something in our lives and we might, by your Holy Spirit, find truth and growth uh, in his wisdom and his, his knowledge that he gives to us. We thank you for what you'll do in these days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill, and, and have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.